In recent years, RF mobile detectors have become more and more useful. So in the next few slides, we're going to go over where and why are RF mobile detectors useful. So government facilities. Uh, it could be the NSA, CIA, any of the government facilities, uh, as there is a lot of sensitive information that pertains to national security, and many times uh, they don't want um, communication uh, to the outside world or leaks of uh, highly classified information. So by having an RF mobile phone detector, you're able to to find those that are communicating uh, when they really shouldn't be. Another is the pharmaceutical facilities. As you will see in after reading the report, uh, I told a little story about a pharmaceutical um, medical drug that was leaked and in which ways they were they were leaked. And in the particular case that I had mentioned, the the employee used Bluetooth in order to leak the information um, from the computer to his phone. And the last is correctional facilities, also known as uh, jails. Uh, the reason why RF mobile detectors are very important in these areas, uh, in this in this specific facility, is because many times inmates will smuggle in or get smuggled uh, a phone. Uh, t in order to communicate outside, in order to plan a, a prison break or to plan an uprising within the jail cell. Uh, so it is very important that the people that are running the correctional facility know who has uh, access to a mobile phone and when they're using it. So by having the mobile detector, they're able to detect within, within a few seconds uh, who and where uh, the, the communication is occurring. So what happens is, I don't know if you can see it, but pin two and three are connected by a 0.33 picofarad capacitor. And then from there, there are some resistance and other capacitors, which leads to the antenna. So what happens is because pin three and pin two are connected, those are the non-inverting and inverting um, inputs of the op amp. It creates a loop antenna from that capacitor. And also from three, we have that there's resistance going up to the power supply and there's a capacitor um, for discharging, which is this one, at, to, to ground. So what happens is that there's some static induced within that pin, those pins, which creates kind of like a loop antenna effect that leads to the to this actual antenna. So what the loop antenna does is that it involves low, it's for low frequency operations, and that's occurring right between those pins. So once we get that loop antenna working, we have that from two to six, which is this right here because we needed about 2.2 mega ohms. Right there, we're going to the output. So what's coming in from the antenna is going through this loop antenna and being sent to pin six. And from pin six, we're connected to the base of the BJT. I don't know if you can see that. So we're at the base of the BJT, which is right here. And then from here on our collector side, we have our resistance in parallel with a capacitor and then we have our LED so our LED is taking this voltage from the base and it's emitting it out to the LED and here we have the collector with the capacitor and the resistance and this is basically the switching the fast switching effect which is for when the antenna is capturing RF signals we have this fast switching with the voltage because there's not a lot of voltage coming in through the antenna, but it's being amplified as it comes out of the op amp and it's coming out the LED and it's also allowing this voltage to come in and out from the collector. I don't know if you can see the light going off. 